never fucking had it. Shut no way. Oh, never oh, fucking oh, had no way. it. Like, Austin, you trying to tell something else right now? <laughs> All that experience, all that emotions, all the things that happen in that one life is boiled down to what we call instinct. And that's the only thing we can bring over to the next life. You won't be hanged, you, you'll be cancelled. Coincidence, coincidence, coincidence. There cannot be three. All right, all right. Welcome back to the Collective Minds Podcast. This is going to be episode 36 for us. Tonight, you got me, Astro, you got Ledger, and you got my boy, Jay, in the house. All three of us say hello, guys. Hello. Hello, kids. We are back with a good one, too. Today, we are going to be talking about witches, witchcraft, and the Salem Witch Trials. So put that seatbelt on and get ready for this one. I do have a question for you guys starting out. And it is witchcraft defined is traditionally the use of magic or supernatural powers to harm others. A practitioner of witchcraft is a witch in medieval and early modern Europe, where the term originated accused witches were usually women who were believed to have attacked their own community and often to have communed with evil beings. That being said, here's a couple questions for you guys. What do you guys think about witches? Ledger, you go first. Um, well, so what many people think would be like, you know, Halloween old ladies with big noses and, you know, that are green and live in uh, old shacks and stuff. But I think it's it's like more of like demonic, you know, like feels like um almost like devil worshippers kind of. So connected with uh, the devil. Yes. pretty much. Yeah evil what about you jay send it i know they're real um witches and warlocks because the warlock is like the, the guy version of which um i don't i don't think the stereotype holds like you know they're like ugly big nose i think some some witches are hot do you believe that they um, live in candy houses and eat small children? No. Only the fun that's, ones. That, that's like um, believing that gingerbread man exists. I mean, have you Good. seen I Hermione so. as an adult? Emma Watson? Yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she's, she's pretty hot. You're right, Jay. I, I think that they... Uh, do exist as well i'm on that side of things and i think that they blend in not just as much as everyone else but maybe even better because of which, the point of them being a witch i also believe that it ties into native americans and stuff with that back then and that's very interesting and i'll point that out down the road here but that's very interesting you say that so yeah many cultures uh do have their own versions of witches and with witchcrafts but it comes um up from all places you know all the all the way around the world they have their own version of a witch so next question guys have you noticed any witchcraft in today's world that you could pinpoint or you think seems a little witchy what i could say is like with celebrities and stuff and how people get so obsessive over that and I feel like that could be some form of witchcraft and like Illuminati type stuff, you know, like brain, uh, brain manipulation, manipulation and stuff like that could fall into that. Perfect. What about you, Jay? Spells are everywhere. Like how um, the powers that be uses uh, words in our faces. I agree. Much bums. <laughs> I agree. It is all over the place. Uh, we'll get into that too at the end as well. We'll break some of these, some of what I've noticed and seen. And uh, Mr. Donut from the Donut Factory has helped a lot with this. He's most of his videos are about uh, satanic rituals, which I do believe witches work with 
evil, the devil or demons, or <laughs> and that's pretty much what they are, is that they've made a deal with some sort of entity, negative entity, to be able to cause <laughs> things to happen. Yeah, to be able to yeah. negatively impact people around them. And we may see that a lot today. So guys, last question before we get going here. What do witches do from your knowledge or your beliefs? What do they do? What are witches known for? Like, what do they do? So witches or the practice of witchcraft, in my opinion, is is basically um, using words to take control of a person and manipulate the environment around them. It also goes into uh, alchemy, um, using herbs and spices and stuff. I don't, I, I don't know. The words aren't coming to my head, but it, it's basically like alchemy. You're putting a whole bunch of things together, and the certain chemical does something. I got um, you. I got you. Good thing. Could be a good thing for healing, or it could be nefarious for maybe taking someone taking control of someone. I think the word is elements, not just yeah, physical elements, elements, elements. but uh, yeah, elements is in words, feelings, emotions, energy, even you know the physical parts of it too as well. People usually only focus on that, like a witch with a cauldron mixing physical stuff, even though the true magic has less to do with the physical stuff and more to do with the spiritual side of things. The you know the words the it's almost like math it seems like some sort of some sort of math how about you ledger what do witches um, do go ahead and send it yeah i agree a lot with jay like manipulation i feel like and also um i don't know uh like yeah mixing elements and all that like the stereotypical you know magic and stuff and but with salem and that they so what they all said was they said that they got away and they framed um, those girls, you know. And, yes. But they all. But then they also said. Then I was reading Ron earlier, and it was also saying that some people thought that the girls like had some were like or there was something going on like with the air, or with something they were eating or drinking that was, that was making them hallucinate was what people were saying, which that could also tie to to um, them that to oh, make, yeah pretty much make them girls think they're crazy you know gotcha yeah we're gonna get into a lot of that too here in a minute uh the theories and all that stuff because everyone likes to go into the whole there's a scientific aspect to all of it yeah which in a lot of ways there are but then back then they had their own scientific aspects of that and years before that they had scientific aspects of that you know and then there's like missing cities and proof of mars having a nuclear war thousands of years ago so even though yeah. today in this day and age we think we're super advanced and smart are what we call science to describe stuff and which you know, define it it could be wrong also on that topic kind of it's kind of off topic but uh with space and stuff so the moon right they say we're moving it's moving however many centimeters away per however many you know years and notice how the moon has a lot of craters and we have this giant hole in the middle of nowhere i forgot where where that was called um you know do you guys know what i'm talking about looks like a giant crater here um, Yellowstone? the what the grand canyon no it's, it's like no it looks like just a giant like not trench it's like more of like more of a square and like a desert kind of but you cannot tell me that the moon didn't run into um, Earth at some point, <laughs> it, or we were all one big landmass, and then all of a sudden, one time it just broke, and then now we're some now we're all separated miles and miles away. The landmass is called Pangea or whatever. We had these giant lizards that lived before us, and I wonder what could have extinct or made them go extinct, or made them. I don't think they ever did leave. I don't think so either. They. I, or made them go live somewhere else you know this tangent is totally about to bring us into a million different conspiracies the rabbit yeah. hole he opened up and lit up the yeah. gateway <laughs> well how about Which, 
with and, moons and witches there seems to be a correspondence there which is yeah. interesting because the moon itself brings in its own energy and even in nursing homes and stuff people get weird prisons jails people start acting weird around full moons the energy that it brings down i mean it literally controls the waves of the ocean yeah which also kind of, kind of is weird for me is why people act so crazy when a thunderstorm comes by you know like like dry, even driving weird. People freak out whenever a thunderstorm is coming. Oh, yeah. It's all connected. It's all energy. And that's what we are. We're energy beings. Mm-hmm. All right, guys. So getting into the Salem witch trials, they were a series of hearings and prosecutions of people accused of witchcraft in colonial Massachusetts between February 19 or 16, sorry, 1692 and May 1693. Now, belief in the supernatural and specifically in the devil's practice of giving certain humans, witches, the power to harm others in return for their loyalty had emerged in Europe as early as the 14th century. It was widespread in colonial New England. In addition, the harsh realities of life in the rural Puritan community of Salem Village at the time included the after effects of a British war with France and the American colonies in 1689. A recent smallpox epidemic, fears of attacks from neighboring Native American tribes, and a long-standing rivalry with the more affluent community of Salem Town. Amid these simmering tensions, the Salem witch trials would be fueled by residents' suspicions of and resentment toward their neighbors, as well as their fear of outsiders. So that's kind of what started everything, is fear. And, fear, yeah, fear, and- fear. Fear controls people very much, as we've seen in the past couple of years, right? And also... Um- there was actually two um, Salem Village and then there was Salem and they were go together. So, yeah, there was two of them and they were kind of in competition to each other. It seems like I think one was bigger and there were. So this was back when people were like settling. It's way before the U.S. was official. So they're settlers. There's still a bunch of Native American conflict, a lot of uh, migration of all sorts of people going into it. And lots of slavery as well at the time. In January 1692, nine-year-old Elizabeth Betty Paris and 11-year-old Abigail Williams, the daughter and niece of Samuel Paris, Elizabeth Paris' father, minister of Salem Village, began to have fits, including violent contortions and uncontrollable outbursts of screaming. After a local doctor, William Griggs, diagnosed bewitchment, other young girls in the community began to exhibit similar symptoms including Ann Putman Jr., Mercy Lewis, Elizabeth Hubbard, Mary Walcott, and Mary Warren. In late February, arrest warrants were issued for the Paris's Caribbean slave, Tatuba, along with two other women, the homeless beggar Sarah Good and the poor elderly Sarah Osborne, whom the girls accused of bewitching them. So this started from a bunch of little girls, prepubescent little girls, acting weird, right? And this got me interested in it because a lot of times especially with the warrens which for those listening we're going to do a podcast on them soon is spirits like to attack uh girls that are right before starting puberty or about that's when poltergeist actually that's a one way to know if it's a poltergeist a demon or just an angry spirit of some sort is around this time it starts happening and you're about to see how People today think they were just full of it, right? They just came up with it and started acting weird and it got serious. And But people were different back then, guys. So everything was taken very seriously. People acted very serious. They took this stuff serious. You know I mean, they, they did not mess around with it. And of course, kids mess around. But the way kids mess around today is way different than back in the 1600s, my guys. So... They knew the severity of this when they were doing it. And that kind of pushes me against the whole, they were doing it on purpose. Some of them, some of them could have been, because they could have been influenced by the other. I mean, this is back when people were fainting, like it was a real thing, you know, women, uh, you know, uh, which, which I believe the the, the girls. So like what I was saying earlier is um, they could be, could have been manipulated by a spell that a witch could have been there and actually made them think that, like see weird stuff that was going on and think that people were all like looked like witches and stuff right 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 and it could have been uh the the mold in the food or Mm -hmm. the other stuff 
cover, I think we're going to get a little deeper into witchcraft and that if witchcraft was actually going on during this time, it actually prevailed. It didn't lose. So let's talk about Tatuba. She was the very first person to be accused of practicing witchcraft by Elizabeth Paris and Abigail Williams. It has been theorized that Tatuba told the girls tales of voodoo and witchcraft prior to the accusations. Tatuba was allowed to speak against her accusers despite their race because it was not illegal for slaves to give testimony in court. She was also the first person to confess to practicing witchcraft in Salem in March 1692. Initially denying her involvement in witchcraft, Tatuba later confessed to making a witch cake, but she confessed to making it after she was beaten by Samuel Paris, the daughter's, uh, the girl's dad, which is also the slave owner of Tatuba. Tatuba also confessed to speaking with the devil, and in her confession, she stated that he ordered her to worship him and hurt the children of the village. When she was questioned later, she added that she learned about the occult techniques from her mistress in uh, Barbados, who taught her how to ward herself from evil powers and reveal the cause of witchcraft. Since such knowledge was not supposed to be harmful, Tatuba again asserted to Paris that she was not a witch, but she admitted that she had participated in an occult ritual where she made the witch cake in an attempt to help Elizabeth Paris. So she said that she actually made a witch cake to and help a, a, the girl. And what they would say is a witch cake, they'd have to use, um, it was rye and the young girl's urine, and they feed it to the dog. And the dog, if the dog acted the same way that the girl was acting, then um, then she was affected by witchcraft. Yes, that yeah. And that's how they would test for witches too, is to make the cake, feed it to the dog. And if the girl or uh, whoever the witch was started it hurt them or whatever as the dog was eating the cake then they were a witch now i'm just gonna say this now uh before we get into more is that what i was saying about it being very interesting ledger that you were talking about native americans and uh witchcraft with them is that we don't know if tatuba was actually black Mm -hmm. and actually came from the islands or wherever she came from it's actually theorized now that she was actually a native american because she was in the kitchen and was a cook and all the native american slaves uh the women were typically cooks in the kitchen so with history given that it's thought that most of the information about tatuba is wrong and that she was actually native american and that she had nothing to do with voodoo from overseas or anything like that that and and which would make sense because um that colony and the native americans you know they had beef they were fighting yes Mm -hmm. it makes a lot of sense Uh, lots and lots of sense especially in uh that area so the three accused witches were brought before the magistrates jonathan corwin and john hawthorne and questioned even as their accusers appeared in the courtroom in a grand display of spasms contortion screaming and writhing though good and osborne denied their guilt tatuba confessed likely seeking to save herself from certain conviction by acting as an informer snitch she claimed that there were other witches acting alongside her in the service of the devil against the puritans as hysteria spread throughout the community and beyond into the rest of massachusetts a number of others were accused, including Martha Corey and Rebecca Nurse, both regarded as upstanding members of church and community, and the four-year-old daughter of Sarah Good. You know what just clicked? Huh. So how they say that she was a witch and she was also the cook, and she could have been putting different types of herbs and stuff into their food, which could dun, have made dun, them crazy. Dun. Energy. I used to cook, and I mean, I still cook all the time. I consider myself somewhat of a chef. And I believe that, you know, when they say you're like, oh, grandma makes it better or something like that, or someone makes it better, or mom makes it better because it's mom yeah. or, you know, grandma or whatever. It's because, and they say also, we like to say it's made with love. Yeah. There's an energy to that. You can make it the exact same way the ex- to the T and it just some, for some reason doesn't taste the same. When it comes to making and preparing food, there is an energy to it. and when I make food, I like put positive energy, like love into it. Like I love what I'm doing. You can tell the difference in food, not just because of like quality. Uh, when someone loves what they do, when they're make, like when they cook food, when they make it, 
or when they don't. You can tell the difference just from that. I don't know what it is, but I can just tell. So, like Tatuba, several accused witches confessed and named still others, and the trials soon began to overwhelm the local justice system. In May of 1692, the newly appointed governor of Massachusetts, Massachusetts, William Phipps, ordered the establishment of a special court of Oyer to hear and, and terminer to decide on witchcraft cases for Suffolk, Essex, and Middlesex counties. Presided over by judges including Hawthorne, Samuel Seawall, and William Stoughton, the court handed down its first conviction against Bridget Bishop on June 2nd. She was hanged eight days later on what would become known as Gallows Hill in Salem Town. Five more people were hanged that July, five in August and eight more in September. In addition, seven other accused witches died in jail, while the elderly Giles Corey, Martha's husband, was pressed to death by stones after he refused to enter a plea at his arraignment, which means they put stone, heavy stones on him. And uh, It took two days for him to finally die. That's crazy. I didn't know that. Thank you, Ledger. Yeah, they uh, put and heavy, they, heavy stones they, on him. Yeah, they used that method um, to try to get people to talk, and he wouldn't. And it finally took him two days for him to uh, finally die. Good for him. Yeah. Good oh. for him. God rest his soul. Though the respected minister Cotton Mather had warned of the dubious value of special or spectral, spectral evidence or testimony about dreams and visions. So they started convicting people on their dreams. So, like, if people had a dream you were a witch, they tried to convict you for it. His concerns went largely unheeded during the Salem witch trials. Increased Mather, president of Harvard College, and Cotton's father later joined his son in urging that the standards of evidence for witchcraft must be equal to those for any other crime, concluding that it would be better that 10 suspected witches may escape than one innocent person be condemned. So they started making a movement there and breaking it down, going, ah, we can't be killing innocent people here, guys. <laughs> Not that the witchcraft doesn't exist, and I want, I want you guys and everyone that hears this to know that. It was never said that witchcraft didn't exist that witches didn't exist the problem was being able to find out who the witch was and that's why i said in the beginning i believe the witches won this one i truly honestly do it was never stated at any point in time that it didn't exist so let's go to the law the law did not then use the principle of innocent until proven guilty if you made it to trial the law presumed you guilty if the colony imprisoned you you had to pay for your stay in the in the jails Courts relied on three kinds of evidence, confession, testimony of two eyed witnesses to the acts of witchcraft or spectral evidence. When the afflicted girls were having their fits, they would interact with an unseen ailment, the apparition of the witch tormenting them, as well as the dreams. According to Wendell Craker, no court ever convicted an accused of witchcraft on the basis of spectral evidence alone but other forms of evidence were needed to corroborate the charge of witchcraft, which a lot of these people lied and said they saw this. We saw them doing something that was witchy just to convict them because all it's smaller place. They're all fighting each other. It's either you or me, you know, courts allowed casual relationship evidence, for example, to prove that the accused possessed or controlled an afflicted girl, prior conflicts, bad acts by the confused or accused, Sorry, possession of materials used in spells greater than average strength and witches marks also counted as evidence of witchcraft. If the accused was a female, a jury of women examined her body for witches marks, which supposedly show that a familiar had bitten or fed on the accused. Other evidence include the touching test. Afflicted girls tortured by fits became calm after touching the accused. So the little girls... <laughs> that were being affected by witches would calm down if they were touched by the guilty. So if these girls calmed down uh, after they said someone was a witch, then that person was, was killed. Courts could not base convictions on confessions obtained through torture unless the accused reaffirmed the confession afterward. But if the accused recanted the confession, authorities usually tortured the accused further to obtain the confession again. <laughs> Isn't that funny? That's, that's messed up. Isn't that funny? So, 
<laughs> so they couldn't they couldn't convict you if they tortured you and got a confession, right? But they could convict you if they tortured you again and got the confession again. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry for laughing. It's fucked up. People are fucked up. If you recited the Lord's Prayer, you were not a witch. The colony did not burn witches. It only hanged them. So what do you guys think of that so far? It's it's a pretty crazy system. Uh, thank God it was so long ago. Witches were never denied. But yeah, it, they could torture you and you it'd finally admit, yeah, I'm a witch. I'm a witch. I'm a witch. And then, yeah, they could torture you again to get it the second time. That justice system is messed up. You're basically, they, they were basically of being a witch, even though you're not a witch. And they'll just keep trying and trying and trying. Right. They'll just try you and they'll get you to do it. So pretty yeah. much most of them got out of it from snitching, admitting and then snitching, giving the people what they wanted. Very interesting. So on to the next one. The Salem witch trials divided the community. Of course, neighbor testified against neighbor, children against parents, husband against wife. The children died in prisons. Families were destroyed. Churches were removed from their congregations. Some of the persons accused of witchcraft. After the court of Oyer and Terminier was dissolved, the superior court of judicature took over the witchcraft cases. They disallowed spectral evidence completely. Most accused of witchcraft then resulted in acquittals. However, more than 200 people were accused. 30 were found guilty, 19 of whom were executed by hanging. 14 men and 5 women. One other man, Giles Corey, was pressed to death for refusing to plead. And at least 5 people died in jail. Many children. In January 1697, the Massachusetts General Court declared a day of fasting for the tragedy of Salem witch trials. The court later deemed the trials unlawful, and the leading justice, Samuel Sewall, publicly apologized for his process in the role, or for his role in the process. My bad. I've read that backwards. This looks like now. The damage to the community lingered. However, even after Massachusetts, Colony passed legislation restoring the good names of the condemned and providing financial financial restitution to their heirs in 1711. So it took quite a while uh, for them to get financial restitution, which I'm not sure what that was. I didn't dive that deep into it. I'm sure it wasn't enough, but I do believe that the witches won this one. And the reason I do is by looking into witchcraft, which is what we decided, like it's manipulation of such affecting people. And the devil works in very messed up ways, right? Were those girls in the beginning affected by witchcraft? Were they affected by evil spirits? I believe it, but I don't believe that that's what was going on entirely. I believe that it was to start the hysteria that followed that caused people to start killing each other, to blaming everyone but the true witches that were possibly around them and what happened. Now, I don't want to say that the slave was a witch, but she's, she got free. She went free. She wasn't killed. So it's quite possibly she was. Yeah. And which they say that the witch has got away. I believe so. I believe so. I believe that they, it was all part of the plan. And what happened to the Salem Witch Trials? I believe they confused and manipulated them all based on their religion. But they were looking for like, oh, this is what it's supposed to be if it's a witch. Well, it's actually a witch making regular people do these things or whatever to go for it. And all the symptoms those girls have look just like a poltergeist episode looks like possession demonic possession of a poltergeist and poltergeists are very smart we'll break that in another podcast but they manipulate very well like uh in that movie the poltergeist with the girl her head spin around you know and she's all like laughing and puking up the green stuff and mocking them and saying fucked up shit that's a poltergeist that's like what it is not to the t but it's a poltergeist is way more mouthy 
like it talks a lot more and expresses more and it's very very manipulative when you look at a demonic possession to a poltergeist possession it's completely different demonic is more oppressive depressive it's like eating the thing you know the other one is almost like it's there for manipulation of everyone around it wants it it's taking everything from everyone that's what it looks like here and knowing that um the first woman got ended up getting away as a slave all these people they were the first three were lower level people in the system after that the other people were like wealthy and in the church and like higher ups you know so it looks like a witch created a plan and caused an effect to take out prevalent people that were there and religious people at the same time what do you guys think yeah that could make a lot of sense um and especially on what you said with the guys i feel like it's and the, the demonic possession the demonic is more trying to eat the the person that is possessing from the inside out and i feel like a poltergeist is more there just to cause havoc and spread evil all right so with ed and lorraine warren one of the poltergeist situations they had there was a cat that the family owned and a voice would come from the cat mocking them and saying messed up shit and just talking crap and stuff like that like poltergeist can make vocals come from things i mean i think all of it can but for some reason poltergeist do which if you look at a poltergeist it's not actually it's like a it's almost like a tulpa to where it's created which demons are created too or in everything but tulpas are created from energy so it's possible that what happened to these girls when we talk about energy which we talk about the witchcraft being forms of energy and stuff it could have been created by a witch to cause this and it worked it really worked yeah pretty crazy so yeah a lot of innocent people were killed during that time uh the hysteria was insane everyone pointing fingers at each other looks a lot like the country today though with the divide and conquer if you ask me so i'm gonna bust through some of these and then i want to talk about it let's have a discussion about it that's all i got for the salem witch trials so i want to talk about witchcraft of today what i've seen what i know about so the humiliation ritual that we've seen with yeah mgk pete davidson you know them wearing a dress i believe that is a good cutty yeah yeah good cutty witchcraft with ritual form of uh humiliation witchcraft demonic that kind of stuff so then we there's also the blood rituals which is also with mgk and megan fox how they suck the blood of each other and uh you know the whole adrenochrome thing as well as well as Joe mm-hmm. Biden's newest speech, where he's got the red lighting in the back. He's talking about MAGA this, MAGA that, with the Marines in the background. It's a blood ritual. That's what it felt like to me. Then we got the, like with the witches, the symbols, symbolic energy, which are called uh, sigils. They're charged with energy. That comes from all different groups all over the world as well. And uh, in today's world, we have these things, you guys might know them, they're called memes. You ever heard of those? Yeah. <laughs> well, those are symbols, boys, and those are also charged by emotions. They were called mimes. Mimes? I've never heard that one. But yeah, they're charged by emotions. And uh, Donut goes into that hardcore. But yeah, so that's a form of witchcraft as well. So you got uh, humiliation, blood, symbolic. And then you got uh, sex magic, which also can be used with sigils. Uh, See a lot of the sexualization of uh, everything today, for one. That's been going on for a long time. But now you're seeing it with children. You're seeing it in the schools. You're seeing it with everything. I mean, that's everywhere. And then you got effigies, which was like the cake that they were doing. Because that was my thing is they made the cakes to test if it was witches and i was like they tricked the witches tricked the people into doing witchcraft they made cakes to feed to a dog to see if the witch would react they were doing witchcraft just like the voodoo dolls 
it's the same concept. Isn't that wild? They cause these people yeah. to do witchcraft on each other. They stone. They put stones on a guy. They were hanging him. They were doing all these crazy tests. That if you look at it now, it's like that was witchcraft. They were committing on each other. Something tricked these people into doing witchcraft on themselves, looking for witchcraft. That's why they couldn't find it. Then you got effigies, which is like the Burning Man ritual, right? Which I just said, you know, the voodoo dolls, all that stuff. Yeah. So it's just anti-God, anti-religion, anti-positivity, extra sexualization of everything, children, entertainment, as well as violence is what was looked for with witches. And now it seems to be taking over the world. So they used to look for um, women that were either out of wedlock, banging a bunch of dudes, or in wedlock, cheating on the husband, or violence, being violent, which pretty much back then just meant standing up for yourself, fighting for your, your rights, fighting for yourself. Those were also seen as witchy. Back then, a woman was like in her place, and if she stood out and said or did anything against that, she was witchy. <laughs> well, we're seeing that now in real time of where violence is looked up upon in music movies entertainment everything in our life if they don't you know if they don't allow us to have as many abortions of killing babies as we want you better go to the streets and burn their fucking houses down let's have a parade of a bunch of gay tranny dudes banging each other on the street for five-year-olds to see so they just know about it witches witches it's witchcraft it's the same thing that happened in Salem back in the 1600s, having convincing the people that they are on the good side, fighting the bad side, and at the same time doing the exact same thing they accused the bad side of doing. Is this clicking? <laughs> Is this starting to click? <laughs> Everything they say, they are actually really doing it. Look at the witch in that. They've been bewitched. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy. So then also uh, the animalistic actions and physical um, features of people. Uh, so blending in animals from humans is also demonic. It's also witchcrafty. They are now putting in large cat litter boxes in schools for kids who identify as cats. Mm -hmm. uh, the whole gender ideology, it's not even gender, male, female, whatever. It's, it's they're pushing for the change of humanity itself, which is the plan of Lucifer anyway. That's always what it was, messing with humans, trying to change them. That's where we go into the whole Sasquatch, Giants, Nephilim topic. But it's happening today at a different, in a different style. It's being pushed. And if you say, oh, I don't believe that that kid is a flying cat, you're a bigot. You're a witch. Mm -hmm. Just change the word. You're a witch, even though saying that that child is a flying cat is witchcraft. It's energy. It's words. It's energized sigils. It's sexually charged. It's violently charged. It's symbolic. And it's humiliative. It's everything that they're doing in a big circle. What do you guys think about that? <laughs> it's a big circle trick. I wish you'd give me a big circle jerk, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, guys, um, what witchy stuff? I know you got a ton. Let it just roll through. Skip the ums. <laughs> Ledger. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> All of us. I know. Let's go. Um, but seriously, <laughs> like in today's day and age, what else do you guys see that is uh, what you would call witchcraft? I mean, I kind of just twisted it, trying to show you guys how it's the same thing, just different words now. And I mean, yeah, I mean, mainstream, yeah, yeah, right, 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 right. right. The instead school of, system, instead of those little girls, right, pointing the finger, saying "You're a witch, you're a witch, you're a witch." You know, if if one of those little girls pointed at me back then, and that day, I'd break a finger off. You know, what I mean, it's like, oh, look at that. You just can't do that anymore. You know, maybe, maybe not, but seriously. <laughs> They were trying to fucking kill you is what it was. They were getting themselves out of it. And I've seen the movies where they try to portray it as like, oh, this two girls, 
did this and it started a chain reaction. There's no fucking chain reaction here. It did not happen that way. These kids were affected by something and it wasn't, oh, this is fun pretending to be bewitched. There's no Mm -hmm. fucking way. They were hanging people for the word being said about them. These little kids weren't doing it. There's no way. I've seen all sorts of stuff about it. There's no way it happened. I think it, uh, I think something actually really did happen there. And like I said, I think the witches got away. <laughs> yeah. But what do you think? I want to hear, I want to hear from you, Jay. What do you think? Uh, any ideas on, on other witchcraft today besides just the mainstream media? Like, let's get into specifics. Let's, let's break it down for them. Nothing really comes to mind. The mainstream media is the only thing that comes like blatantly into my mind. Okay, well, what about the pandemic, the hysteria around it? Mm, I can see it being one. Right, fear. But it, it, yeah. Hide your kids, hide your wives, hide your husbands. Stay inside, don't make no money, don't do nothing. Go to our uh, mainstream Walmart that's never been closed. Our uh, giant corporations to feed into that while we get richer and you get poorer. Yep. You know what we'll blame is the witch. You know what we'll blame, Jay? We'll blame those small small businesses with six people that work there. We'll blame those. Those are witches. Those are witches, Jay. <laughs> Anyone that doesn't wear a mask, Jay, that's a witch. You better get this shot, Jay, or else you're a witch. You see the words yeah. change. Yeah. You yeah. See it? You better watch CNN, Jay, or else you're a witch. <laughs> you know, even, even out of Biden's mouth. If you don't vote for me, then you ain't black. Literally, Definitely literally, funny. he's saying, if you don't vote for me, you're a fucking witch. Yeah, Isn't that crazy. It, I mean, it's all, look at what they're saying. It's all witchcraft, man. If you don't think Russia's bad, you're a witch. Oh, wait, all of a sudden there's a uh, biological, you know, stuff there from us. Um, uh, you know, oh, don't look at that, though, or else you're a witch. If you don't march in the streets because of something that's actually not happening. You're a witch. You're racist. You're a witch. You're a racist witch. You're a witch. You're a witch. You don't got to say racist. You're a witch. Yep. <laughs> so back then it was in the church. It was the church. Let's just say the church is a Democratic Party. And anyone outside of that is a witch. Isn't that crazy? What we're going through. Yeah. What we're seeing. It, it's the same thing, dude. <laughs> it's the same thing, man. The only difference now is that um, instead of like rope to make nooses to hang us, it's guns, and we're the only ones with them. <laughs> you know, <laughs> no, 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 they won't. Ha- they won't. You won't be. You won't be hanged. You, you'll be canceled. Oh shit! There he goes. Look at that, Ledger. Mm. You are freaking <laughs> right, dude. Holy shit! You're right. Look at that. You won't I'm be hanged right. physically. You'll be hanged on the internet. You'll be hanged socially. Right. What they call yes, social right. media. Right. Damn, bro. What a swing and a hit on that one. You're right. You'll be canceled. <laughs> They're still doing it, though. How we find out that you're a witch these days? We, 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 make, you, we make you agree to do a bunch of shit that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> that boy in a dress is a girl, right? <laughs> Not a girl with some with a headband on her head is a cat, right? Right, yeah, uh, yeah. This is actually happening when it's not. That's crazy, you guys. That's crazy. You just said that, Ledger. That's blowing my fucking mind right now. You're canceled. It is a witch hunt, and they keep saying that too on mainstream media. Witch hunt, but it actually makes sense after this whole uh, podcast we just did. <laughs> I'm just not worried about it. Thank you for coming. If you like this content, you can find us on YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, Music, Rumble, 50 other places you can actually just look up. We got a ton. We got a distributor that does that all for us. Also, if you like this content, don't forget to like and subscribe and drop a comment below and share it. We're trying to get an unshot of band. Hit the bell icon if you want to hear more of this content. And to be notified for any future content that we may upload. That's it, guys.
Collect Minds Podcast, the American Spartans, boys. We are out. We love you. Love you. <laughs> I wanted to say it. <laughs> say it, Jay. I, say it. I love you.